In this episode, we talk about Rahul Gandhi's first speech in Lok Sabha as the leader of the opposition. We also talk about the welcome that the Indian cricket team received upon reaching Mumbai yesterday. But first, we talk about how 121 people died in the Hathras Stampede. Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. Earlier this week on Tuesday, a religious event led by a local preacher known as Bhole Baba turned into a tragic scene when a stampede took place resulting in the deaths of 121 people, most of whom were women. Now, it turns out at the end of the event, a large number of devotees had scrambled to collect the dust from the preacher's feet. When we spoke to Indian Express's Dheeraj Mishra, he told us about it. In a way, when he was leaving after completing the program, as he sat on his vehicle, people rushed toward his vehicle and they tried to touch his feet, number one, and then they were trying to collect the charan raj. It is called a dust from his feet or dust left from his vehicle. It is a kind of you know superstition that if you will put that charan raj on your forehead, your problems will be solved. He says this is actually a common occurrence at this preacher's events. So when people started rushing towards him, there was chaos. And also because it was raining very heavily that day, there was mud everywhere and people slipped down in a drain. Not exactly the pakka drain, but there was a drain to make way for the water that was coming from nearby farms. So a lot of people slipped from the road to down in the drain and... uh, One thing led to another. I mean, people, they were crushed on each other's feet and they died. So as of now, at least 120 people have died so far. 31 are in hospital. And there are many more people other than who are in hospital. They are injured and they are receiving treatment at their homes. In the subdivisional magistrate's report, it says that over 2.5 lakh people were present at the event. But the administration had only given the organizers permission for 80,000. And even if you go by this number, 80,000 is a very big number. I think even in the rallies of Prime Minister Narendra Modi or Rahul Gandhi, it's really happened that 80,000 of people will arrive in their rallies and listen to them. So 80,000 is already a very big number and administration is saying that we gave permission for 80,000 people. Now typically, organizing large-scale events such as political rallies and concerts involves a lot of planning. Deera says that to begin with, the organizers have to submit an application to the subdivisional magistrate. This process is required to be done because administration must be aware of such a large group of people coming into their area so that if any law and order situation arises, they would be able to handle it. So first, you make an application before the SDM. SDM then seeks a report from the respective police, means from the respective sub-SHO of the police station of that area. So he has to submit the report looking into the every aspect of it that whether this large congregation of the people would cause any law and order problem, will there be any communal tension, will there be any caste-related problem, will there be any traffic-related issue, will there be any type of unwanted thing that can happen. Police have to look into all these things and they prepare a report through their local intelligence unit and submit it to the SDM office. SDM looks into it and then grants the permission with a number of conditions. These conditions include maintaining proper entry and exit routes, ensuring adequate ventilation, having medical services available, and deploying enough personnel to handle any unforeseen incidents. In fact, Dheeraj tells us that during political rallies, the local police identify a nearby hospital and ensure that it is ready to tackle emergencies. But in this case, even after the incident, you would have seen a number of videos where people were taking dead bodies, injured in trucks, in trolleys, in rickshaw, in auto rickshaw, in in tempo, all kind of vehicle. These were their own vehicle or hired or people from neighboring villages. They came to the area to help these people. The ambulance arrived much, much later. 
so now the question is if such a large gathering was taking place was the the nearby chc which is in sikandra rao which is called a trauma center was that hospital made aware of that this is going to happen and you should be ready for any kind of emergency i am sure that they were not informed because when people arrived at those csc a number of things were not working there was not proper facility of oxygen ventilator and bodies were lying on the ground even some of the reporters who were already here in uh, sikandra rao administration was not confirming the number of deceased and uh, injured they had to manually count the dead bodies by themselves so it seems that there has been failure on the part of administration and uh, this baba's organizers now the baba or narayan sakar vishwahari has a huge following among the scheduled caste and the obc community and he himself belongs to the former and dheeraj tells us that his followers believe he is a healer who can get rid of evil spirits possesses magical powers and is someone who can grant their wishes in fact this claim got him arrested in agra 24 years ago when he allegedly took the body of a 16 year old girl forcibly from her family claiming he would bring her back to life it was in year 2000 and he was arrested and sent to jail however the case was later closed his encounter with the police goes as far as 2000 now so far six people including four men and two women have been arrested in the case but this does not include bhole baba in fact his name has not even been mentioned in the fir so there has been a lot of question yesterday chief minister yogi adityanath arrived in hathras event to spot also and he addressed the journalist at civil lines in hathras and uh, when we asked question to him that uh, why bhole baba has not been named in the fir he said that we will take action against everyone who is responsible for this event on the day when incident took place chief secretary and dgp also visited the area he went to the trauma center in sekandra rao and when we asked the chief secretary that will bhole baba be named in the fir he very clearly said that because this incident is a very big incident and definitely he will be named in the fir but so far as of we know bhole baba this man who goes by the name narayan sakar vishwahari he has not been named in the fir so far we also do not know what is his exact location Now although officials claim that action will be taken against Bhole Baba Dheeraj says that many of those who attended the event and are his followers do not believe he is responsible in any way So the very strange thing the very what we can say the irony is uh, the people from who are injured people from deceased family many people who are followers of Baba you know they are not holding bhole baba responsible or they are not holding sevadars responsible for this event they are saying that you know this is a tragedy this is a very big incident but i mean still they have a very strong belief on bhole baba and uh, they have very strong belief on this whole religious gathering that has been taking for last around two decades he says their belief in him remains unshaken and this is despite the fact that some families lost three generations in a single day so yes investigation is underway a high level committee headed by former high court judge has been constituted a judicial committee has been has constituted to investigate this whole case and uh, the main area where the investigation team is looking into number one what was the condition that was put by sdm in his report when he granted permission to hold this big congregation this big religious gathering number one what were the conditions which were not followed by the organizers number two number three what were the arrangements made by the police and uh, district administration itself and was there any lapses on the part of district administration these are some of the main question these are some of the big question that is yet to be answered and uh, yeah and also will bhole baba be arrested will sevadas be arrested how long will it take time to arrest them how long it will take time to complete the investigation these are the questions that uh, most of people especially the deceased family and injured are waiting for and next we talk about rahul gandhi whose first speech as the leader of the opposition earlier this week riled up the ruling government and set the tone for the ongoing parliament session when we spoke to indian express's chief of national political bureau manoj ji 
he told us that in his nearly two hour long speech, Rahul essentially picked up the thread from which he left off in the Lok Sabha campaign. Talking about the atmosphere of fear, Hindutva, the crisis in Manipur, the Agnipat scheme, the NEET controversy, and even the 2016 demonetization move. So the campaign hangover was of course there. He started off his speech with the reference to, you know, Hinduism, which is again not a new topic. I remember way back in 2017, addressing then a youth congress meeting in Delhi. He had spoken about, you know, this Abhay Mudra, this gesture of an open palm and how the gods of many of the religions, you know, they exhibit this Abhay Mudra, which is also the Congress, you know, electoral symbol and all that. And this idea of, you know, Daro Mat, you know, Daraiye Mat. Again, this goes way, you know, long back. He has been talking about all these issues for some time. Of course, it is a symbol that many of you hate. But that idea is the Abhay Mudra, the symbol of the Congress Party. (laughs) And what that Abhay Mudra shows, it is the next step of the evolution of the idea of facing the truth, fearlessness and ahimsa. Satya and ahimsa, as Mahatma Gandhi used to say. And the Abhay Mudra Basically, is Mr. Gandhi's idea that he has been trying to say is that the ideology that the BJP believes in and propagates, it's Hindutva. It is completely different from Hinduism. Now, Hinduism, Mr. Gandhi has been trying to convey is that it's an all-inclusive a religion where there is no scope for you know hatred, violence and all that. Whereas Hindutva, it's a political ideology where he has been accusing the BJP of you know spreading fear, spreading hatred, spreading violence against minorities. So in many public meetings, he had made this distinction of Hindutva and Hinduism. So he started off with that topic, which of course kind of riled up the treasury benches. In fact, several of his remarks regarding Hinduism and BJP were later expunged from the records. But uh, basically he was trying to say that, you know, the BJP is not the custodian of the religion and in the name of religion, they are spreading hatred and violence, which has been a constant theme of Mr. Gandhi for some years now. So that, of course, angered the treasury benches right from prime minister to senior ministers like Amit Shah. Many of them stood up. The prime minister immediately said, you know, it's a very serious matter. You cannot equate a religion with violence. That's a serious matter. Amit Shah got up and, you know, he repeated what Mr. Gandhi said and went on to demand an apology from him. वाकिया को छिपाया नहीं जा सकता। विपक्ष के नेता जी ने कैटेगोरिकली कहा है कि जो अपने आप को हिंदू कहते हैं, वो हिंसा करते हैं। It's a rare sight to see the Prime Minister himself interjecting a leader of the opposition when he speaks. It's also a fact that you know in the last ten years, the last decade, there was no recognized leader of the opposition in Lok Sabha. So he was there, you know, he sat through the entire speech. He interrupted him twice. And half a dozen ministers, right from Amit Shah to Rajnath Singh to Shivraj Singh Chauhan to Bupendar Yadav to Kiran Rijiju. So all of them stood up at various points and tried to rebut Mr. Gandhi. So the Congress perhaps would be satisfied and happy in that sense because that was the impact that they would, you know, see in his speech that the entire government had to, you know, come out and rebut. Uh, immediately after his speech was over, there was a press conference by Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav, another senior minister. So, rebutting what Mr. Gandhi had said. Rahul Ji ne ek sambedhanik pad, manivar adhyaksh ji ke pad ko, jis gair jimmevarana tarike se comment kiya, ati sochniya, ati dukhad hai. So, from that point of view, the Congress would say that, you know, it was a great success for them. And the opposition too was united. In the House, we saw how the Trinamul Congress and how the members of the Trinamul Congress and the DMK, they were all, you know, rallying behind Mr. Gandhi. And he also made it a point to say that he would now be the leader of all the parties. All the parties in the sense, all the parties in the opposition. I don't just represent the Congress party, I represent every single party. And, and I have to treat every single party with love and affection. So when... Hemant Sorenji is in jail or Kejriwal is in jail, it should disturb me, it should hurt me. He started his speech on a provocative topic, but then he moved on to issues that that he had been flagging 
during the campaign, which includes NEET, the issue of paper leak, the issue of Agnivir, the Congress manifesto and the manifestos of many of the opposition parties had talked about, you know, scrapping the scheme if, if the India bloc comes to power. And then he ended uh, on a slightly conciliatory note where he said, "You, the BJP is in government, the opposition will have to accept that fact. And the opposition was ready to, you know, work with the government in the interest of the country. He also told the government to not consider the opposition as enemies. So it was a speech which started off on a slightly provocative note and entered with a subtle uh, reconciliation and acceptance of the reality. And Manoj, after Rahul Gandhi was done with his nearly two-hour-long speech, Tell us how did the Prime Minister respond to his remarks? If you listen to what the Prime Minister said in Lok Sabha and in Rajya Sabha later, it was very clear that the BJP and the Prime Minister himself believes that the Congress's argument that the BJP is not in a majority, they are running a government, you know, riding on the coattails of the TDP or the JDU, and it may not be a one-party government in that sense. So the Prime Minister clearly tried to counter that, saying it is a vote, It's a mandate for stability. It's a mandate for continuity. So he perhaps created history. The only Prime Minister after Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, to have returned to office for the third time. And he made it very clear that, see, the Congress, they're still in denial. They're not ready to accept that from 44 to 52 to 99, it is the third worst defeat of the Congress in its history. And it's a hat-trick of defeats. And the Congress is claiming moral victory, whereas there is no moral victory in that. They have been rejected by the people and they are in the opposition. And the BJP led NDA is in power. Of course, the BJP's reading of Mr. Gandhi's speech as the Prime Minister said, it's on its childish exuberance, is the term Balak Buddhi, several times during his speech yesterday. So his message clearly was that you don't need to, you know, spin it as a victory for the opposition. You have been defeated. You have been rejected by the people. You got only 99. All the India bloc put together, 26, 27 parties, are around 232, where the BJP alone has 240. So it's a mandate for the BJP. So clearly that came out in the debate. But... The larger point being the campaign is over. You had a two-month-long campaign where bitter words were exchanged, acerbic attacks were made, allegations were made, counter-allegations were made. The campaign is over now. You know, there's a government in place, there's an opposition in place. So the debate ideally should have been, you know, moving forward, not just picking up where they had left during the campaign. So that goes to both the BJP and the Congress and the larger opposition as well. Right, they were talking as if the campaign is still going on. So talk about the tone this sets for this parliament session. See, clearly the opposition, although they project it's a moral victory, they managed to shrink the BJP from 303 to 240. The BJP on its own does not have a majority. So it's a better performance for the opposition compared to 2019. And the numbers, the increase in their numbers. So, you know, it's more aggressive, more combative opposition that you will see in the next five years. So this first session clearly has set a tone of how the battle lines would be drawn in parliament. The government clearly saying it's a mandate for them. It's a mandate for stability and continuity. The opposition has been you know, rejected by the people. And the opposition telling the government that, see, you don't have the numbers now. You know, you are running the government with the help of allies. So you give that space uh, to the opposition in parliament, which they believe they have been denied in the last 10 years. So this session was about setting the tone. And I don't see this bitterness or this aggression coming down or there will be any toning down of this rhetoric from both the sides. And Manoj, we understand that a number of remarks made by Rahul Gandhi were expunged by the speaker, which is also the reason we haven't played many of those clips here. But could you talk about what these comments were about? If you remember in February 2023 also, he made that famous speech where he showed pictures of one industrialist sitting with the Prime Minister. In all, if I remember correctly, 18 cuts were made in his speech then. This time, there are around 14 portions, which includes one full paragraph and two or three sentences and then some words and phrases here and there. So, of course, there are five references to Hinduism in the context of BJP, which he made were expunged. Two or three mentions about two prominent industrialists, which he made, which he has always been making, you know, outside parliament as well, which has been a constant theme of his speeches for some years now. There was two mentions uh, on the Agnipat 
scheme and then one each on the paper leak and neat issue one about prime minister personally specifically and one on manipur so in all around 14 cuts were made to his that 100 minute speech he has of course written a letter to lok sabha speaker om birla questioning those expansions arguing that some of the words or some of the sentences you know that he had used uh, were used by some other speakers as well but those were not removed from the parliamentary records so this is a replay of what had happened in 2023 as well in that budget session of 2023 And in the end we talk about the Indian cricket team which returned from Barbados yesterday after winning the T20 World Cup final against South Africa on Saturday. The team had been stranded on the Caribbean island but was flown out of the West Indies on a specially arranged charter flight. Upon their arrival and following a rousing welcome at the airport, the team met Prime Minister Narendra Modi who congratulated them on their triumph. Later the players embarked on a victory parade in an open top bus from Marine Drive to the Wankhede stadium a massive crowd of fans took over the streets covering every inch of marine drive in celebration now the parade was actually 2 hours late when we spoke to indian express's amit kamat who was there on the ground he told us what transpired then there were people just sitting on the ground they were tired they had been i think waiting for i don't know how many hours at that point so they were just uh, resting their uh, ankles at that point and uh, there was a section of young boys who started this uh, funny game of playing catch right so somebody had bought a cricket ball they were throwing it as high in the air as possible it would land somewhere in the crowd whoever caught it or whoever found the ball would throw it back again that continued for a while although during this time somebody in trident decided that they wanted to give the audience a performance so some of the kids started dancing in the windows all of this is happening simultaneously at some point uh, somebody gets very very enterprising they start throwing a shoe in the air that is met by more people throwing shoes in the air throwing any sorts of projectiles in the air thankfully i don't think anybody was hurt everybody took it in the fun spirit that it was being done there were trees which were uh, climbed at some point and there were people standing downstairs that underneath those trees who realized that you know that's a good idea we should also try getting up so at some point there was negotiations going on between the people who had already climbed and people who were downstairs trying to climb uh, but eventually all of that ended when uh, the police guys came along and told you know i don't think you are supposed to do that but he says that it was only when the team finally arrived that the crowd really got going I know a lot of people are saying that aren't we over celebrating or whatever but then I mean India last won a world cup around 13 years back India last won an ICC trophy 11 years back if you're not going to celebrate now when are you going to? and it's especially bruising for the team and the fans that you were so close if you guys have checked out the interview that my colleague uh, Devendra Pandey did with uh, Surya Kumar Yadav he said that you know during the 2023 world cup the ODI world cup that india was hosting they'd reached the final and at that stage it just felt like are abhi to ground pe jana hai aur trophy uthana and then suddenly australia came in the middle and they had other plans so that was clearly rankling for the indian team itself the fans obviously so that sense of you know that monkey getting off the back in a sense was uh, what we saw today and what we are still seeing right now i mean as we are recording this they are still being felicitated at the wankhede stadium uh, and to just to get inside the wankhede stadium uh, mc had said that you know they are going to open the gates at 4 o'clock i believe there were like kilometer long lines from 3 o'clock some people had come there from 2:30 onwards if you read the indian express today you are going to find a very fascinating story from my colleague anil das who spoken to a couple of to one wheelchair bound uh, fan who had shown up at i think as early as 2:30 just to catch a glimpse of their favorite team when you look at something like this you suddenly feel connected to a like you are also part of something you may not have enjoyed the cricket matches or whatever the team playing however they did or you may not even have bothered to watch it but when you are caught in something like this you realize that you know this is something that is not trivial you may not care about it but the rest of the country clearly does 
सो कुछ तो होगा यू आर लिस्निंग टू थ्री थिंग्स बाय द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस Today's show was written and produced by me Shashank Bhargav and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. If you like the show then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it, share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can tweet us at express podcast and write to us at podcast@indianexpress.com. At